You want to know the funny part about that video? Hippos normally don't swim. They're so heavy that they sink to the bottom, so they usually just walk along the lake floor. That hippo was literally sprinting underwater towards that boat. And I don't know what the hell got Motomoto so motivated, but all I saw was malicious intent. Hippos aren't just the most aggressive animals in Africa, they're one of the most homicidal things to ever have a pulse. Not only can they clap crocodiles in half, these Bundy horses will murk animals that are literally zero threat to them. This hippo straight up dominated an antelope for no reason other than I guess the poor animal's breathing too loud and the hippo chose death penalty. Also, this is what happens when a lion tests a hippo's hood. They have one of the most devastating overbites of any animal with a bite force of about 2,000 pounds of force respectfully. But if you've ever seen one violate a watermelon, you already knew that. In an area code with elephants, hyenas, and buffalo, hippos are the most on site and they lay 500 people to rest permanently a year. But God can't help you if they catch you in the water because they've been known to capsize small boats and maul anyone that falls in, either by drowning them, chewing them into human applesauce, or straight up swallowing them whole. And don't think you finna get on their good side. This man adopted an orphan baby hippo only to get brutally mauled and mutilated by the same hippo in the same river he rescued it from. Hippos have no soul. They answer to no God. Moral of this video, if you ever see a hippo yawn, you could be the one going to sleep. Huh. Well, if you're watching this, it means Community Guidelines hasn't taken my ass yet, and you probably want to know what in the hub this X-rated Pokemon is. It's Nermurdy, also known as a ribbon worm, and that nonsense you just watched is how they hunt. The worm shoots out its proboscis, which it uses to wrap around its prey and immobilize it with sticky, toxic secretions, only to end the nightmare by pulling it back into its mouth. The proboscis is a long tube used for eating that normally sits in the worm's guts, but when it wants to catch a body, it forces the proboscis out of its mouth, and some of them are branched just like in this video. It's kinda like how chameleons yeet their tongue to snatch a meal, except this worm looks like Spider-Man busting out the next generation. They're not incredibly dangerous to people, but they do have crippling anxiety, because if you take one out of the water for more than 10 minutes, its body will literally fall apart. No cap, these pieces are actually one worm. It technically doesn't kill the worm, but it is a sign of high stress. So if you don't want to stress a worm, and you don't want to look like someone left a liquid daycare on you, leave it the hell alone. Respectfully. I don't think enough of society realizes just how big these f***ing turtles get. That is the biggest shell jockey of them all, the leatherback sea turtle. This turtle can max out at 7 feet long and violate the scales at 1,500 pounds. For reference, that's about as heavy as some American male bison. The largest leatherback ever found was on Harlick Beach in Wales. It was almost 9 feet long in 2016. That's not the year. That's how much the turtle weighed. 2,016 pounds or 914 kilograms for those of you that aren't American or use the metric system. Which is really just saying not American twice. Even though they're built like a refrigerator with flippers, they can reach speeds of 22 miles per hour while swimming. And you might be wondering why an animal that big would ever need to move that fast. This. This is why. Yeah, this too. But if they can avoid tiger sharks, homicidal Oreo dolphins, or worst of all, people, leatherbacks can live for 70 to 80 years and some even hit the century mark. You'd be surprised how long you live when you stay calm and mind your own business. I already know what you're thinking, but two things. One, that is 100% a female, and two, that's not a... It's, this isn't what it looks like. Hyenas live in female-dominated societies where having a boner is actually a sign of weakness. If two hyenas in a clan interact, the hyena that ranks lower in the hierarchy is the one that'll stand at attention, and this usually happens between two females. Basically, hyenas take feminism so far that getting bricked up is considered an act of submission. Also, that pseudo thing that I'm not allowed to say because of guidelines is actually another thing that I'm not allowed to say. I'm just gonna call it obliterus. Because nature has something against hyenas, females have to give birth through that obliterus. And it's an incredibly painful process for the mother, the cub, anybody watching, it's just bad for everyone involved. Moral of this video, if you're ever pickled out in front of a hyena, according to hyena culture, you're basically its bitch. But if you do get difficult in front of a hyena, you might have bigger personal issues to work on, good buddy. Your mind's been blown. Think about elephants. Have boobs. I'm never gonna think of Dumbo's mom the same. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda thought we already knew about elephant boobs, but I can give you something much, much worse. Have you ever seen a dolphin's rack? Because if you have, you're a liar and you really need to work on that. You're a liar because a dolphin's milk giving area is found inside openings on either side of its anus. Not only that, but a dolphin's nippular area is actually inverted. To get the milk and, you know, live, the baby dolphin will stick its beak inside her mammary slit and then gently nudge the mother who will proceed to squirt the milk into the baby's mouth. You know, one of these days, Guidelines is gonna get tired of my sh**. The people that get triggered by public breastfeeding better be glad we're nothing like dolphins because if we were, it would actually be a felony. Laws would be broken and childhoods would be ruined. To be fair, dolphins only live like this because they're stuck underwater and the mother can control when she ejects the milk so she doesn't waste it out in the ocean. Also, dolphin milk has high fat content, meaning it can pass through water and not get dissolved before it reaches the baby. Also, dolphin milk is oily, bitter, and not very sweet tasting. I don't want to know how we know that. Baby dolphins will drink mama's milk for two to three years. Which probably explains why dolphins are a menace to society. When you spend that much time feeding right next to an asshole, it's only fair that you become one. You are what you eat. There's being down bad, and there's being this beetle. 
So the flower beetle, right? The competition for females is so high that it causes the males to do some of the most down atrocious things I've ever heard of. Because male flower beetles are bisexual, and half the time they're mating, they're actually mounting another male. They'll even go as far as to release inside them. But there's actually a reason for this. Basically, by injecting another male with their own baby maker, if that male mates with a female, it's possible that the love juice of the first male is what gets transferred. Meaning it's possible for a male to knock up a female without ever meeting her because he turned his competition into a walking spank bank. And believe it or not, a lot of male insects actually swing the other way. But not by choice. A lot of times, insects can't tell the difference between a male and a female, and in an evolutionary sense, you're actually better off mating with as many as your kind as possible, even if you get it wrong sometimes than you are by being stingy and possibly missing out on an opportunity. Also, don't ask me how I got this picture. I'm not proud of it. But none of that compares to the depths of hell the flower beetle goes to. So whoever DM me and ask me what's the most sus animal out there, there's your answer. Follow me on Instagram, please, and thank you. You know there's a type of dog that'll run fades with tigers? Meet the dole. It's a wild candid found all over Asia, but especially India, Tibet, and Pakistan. They roll in packs of 5 to 12, but it can be up to 30 of them. They're more social than wolves, and because there's less competition for food, they're less territorial and there isn't much of a hierarchy. They're basically hippie wolves. They hunt prey by running them down, biting their nose, and then forcing them to the ground. Sometimes they'll go for the eyes and blind their victim, and once they have them down, they'll rip their stomach open and disembowel them. Since they don't mercy kill like cats, it can take up to 15 minutes for the prey to make it to God's door, but by then the doles have already started eating. On a wholesome note, they let the pups eat first because the pack prioritizes the weakest and youngest members. Because their grocery list is almost the entire jungle census, they often compete with tigers and leopards. It hasn't been confirmed, but allegedly they put tigers on t-shirts because they are exactly what chihuahuas think they are. They'll often jump tigers and then force them into the trees. Since a tiger can erase a doll with one swipe, the dogs only act tough when they have the squad behind them. They've also been known to straight up punk leopards out of food. But don't get it twisted, if a leopard or a tiger catches a doll slipping, it's curtains. But these Asian Cujos will pocket check bears, tigers, and leopards, but never keep the same energy with humans. It says a lot. You might not like me for this one, it might hurt some feelings, but it needs to be said. This guy right here, the honey badger? Yeah, he's not a real badger. Honey badgers are part of the Mustilidae family, meaning they pull up to the same cookout as otters, skunks, weasels, wolverines, and actual badgers. But the specific genus they're in is Melivora, which makes them scientifically one of a kind because they're the only member. And if you look at the family tree, you'll see the honey badger right there on the Celine Dion, all by himself. That group right there has a Japanese badger, the Asian badger, and a European badger. The American badger is right there, but they're not closely related to other badgers because if there's one thing Americans insist on, it's being difficult. But the honey badger's nowhere near either of them, meaning they're not closely related to badgers. As for how they got their name, the naming guy lied in a job application and it shows, which is probably why snow leopards aren't actually leopards. Also, when you compare honey badgers to true badgers, it's not hard to find the imposter. So then, what is it? Well, some believe his closest relative is this weasel-like animal called a marten. So when you hear me call this dude a felony ferret or a roid weasel, I'm kinda being serious. This black air force is closer to being a honey marten than an actual honey badger. It had to be said, I'm not apologizing for it. Somebody on Facebook shared a post about Australia and said it is the land of nope's not and get the fuck away from here. And from the way y'all tagged me in that video, I guess it's my job to explain what this Oreo-flavored body snatcher is. Doflenia armata is a striped sea anemone, the largest type of anemone found off the coast of I don't even need to tell you you know exactly where it is. But bro had the right idea. The only thing you need to remember is to stay the God-fearing away from this thing because not only can they sting you, it could take months for you to heal. Keep in mind that anemone are part of the Nidaria family. I'm not even finna lecture you. The only names you need to remember are Jellyfish and Man of War because those its cousins. Their tentacles have papillae which are covered in large explosive stinging cells called nematocysts which will introduce themselves to your skin if this satanic Pokemon feels threatened. The tentacles end with a swollen tip that's also covered in excruciatingly painful venom. Difference between this thing and your ex, if bro hits you with just a tip, you'll actually feel it. I actually love Australia but y'all are really one of one.